Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an amazing young lady by the name of Ashley Bernardi. Ashley, how are you doing? Oh, I'm great today, Jay. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited about our conversation. Awesome. Well, it's an honor to have you here. You guys, let me give you guys her bio. She she is the founder of a powerhouse media relations firm, Nardi Media, where she works with corporations, brands, entrepreneurs, and nonprofits in obtaining high-profile placements in broadcast, print, and online media. She is trained as a journalist at CBS News and nationally syndicated program Energy Now. On Bloomberg and Washington Post Live, she has a natural ear for a story and a journalist's passion for research. The traumatic death of her father at a young age and a diagnosis of Lyme disease and postpartum depression after the birth of her third child deepened her passion for health, wellness, and spirituality. That's why she's here today and taught her how to access her own authentic power to heal her life. By the way, that is a profound word mm. uh, amalgamation or grouping, authentic power. Mm -hmm. Words, as you know, have great power. So you are a certified life designer and you received your certificate in the science. I love this. The science of well-being right. from Yale University. In addition, Ashley hosts the award-winning podcast, Two Girls Talking. Well, you got to bring me on, dude. Like, I, are I you was serious? to have you on. You're on mine next. Let's okay. go. <laughs> That's happening. Uh, the oldest child in a proud military family. I'm also the oldest child. Ashley was born in Schweinfurt, Germany, and has lived and worked in New York City and Washington, D.C. She currently resides in Northern Virginia with her family, and she's a frequently featured expert in the media, including Forbes, Great Day Washington, Good Day DC, and more. Not Good Day LA, but Good uh, Day DC. <laughs> awesome. Well, Ashley, it's an honor to have you here today. Um, let me ask you, as I'm prone to do now on the Jay Campbell podcast, but I am asking folks, um, we are in very turbulent times on planet Earth today, right? You and I were talking off air where you place your consciousness is the life that you will create for yourself. Again, right? Create your heaven on earth. Ignore the right. third dimensional noise. But clearly, we are in unstable slash turbulent times. Where, in your opinion, is the earth headed in, say, the next three to five and then maybe forecast out seven to ten years? Opinion yeah. question totally. Power, that is a powerful question. I can tell you where I'm headed and where I hope the earth is headed. Great answer. I feel like if I start there, um, I might be able to emit some energy out to the world. So, you know, I have been on this spiritual journey for several years now. Where I'm spiritually headed is. I have continued to open up the door of my spiritual curiosity and flex that muscle. And the more I do, <laughs> um, I feel like my consciousness uh, is growing and I'm also learning about what really matters here and what doesn't. And when I look at worldly events, um, I see a lot of scariness. I also work in the media and I'm a former journalist. <laughs> like fear was how I operated. That's amazing. I mean, uh, I mean, because you, I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're really a beacon because I mean, so many people in that field, you know, in your chosen profession of being in the media as a journalist are basically, you know, completely sucked into the vortex of fear. It's part of the job. It's part of the business. I mean, you know, you've heard this, if it bleeds, it leads, right? Like that's how the media gets people's eyeballs, attention, ear, and it's been going on for 50 or 60 years. So that's so cool that you're like, you know, you're trained professionally in that, but now you're like reversing it. I'm reversing like, it. There's yeah. so many incredible stories. Like, I mean, I even saw stories that are not, that are playing out that aren't getting national attention. Like, you know, people praying in Ukraine right now, people right. singing together and coming right. together. And, and like, that's what I want to be showing. And even like, 
what are folks doing here to help, you know, Ukrainian family members over there? Like those are the types of stories that I want to be telling those stories of doing good, of helping right. society, of helping humanity. That's my role now. And I feel like it is a, um, it's a spiritual duty and calling yeah to do this. Like I can't, I'm like, my work's not done. I can't retire. I have to keep doing this. It's my job to help raise the, the, um, raise us to a higher level of consciousness. That's amazing. Well, I mean, again, your, uh, enthusiasm is infectious and palpable. So that's awesome. Let's talk a little bit about some of your talking points. Um, authentic power, right. That's in your bio. Um, again, authentic power is one of the power statements or phraseologies that I use in one of my affirmations every day, mm. right? Like I am powerful, persuasive and energetic, right? Like that's one of my affirmations. So it's like, I'm, you know, very similar to you in that, but like words have incredible power, you know, the ancient sages, gurus, avatars, you know, all understood the significance of uh, not only the words meaning literal meaning, but also the intonation of the word and stuff like that. So let's talk a little bit about what does it mean to have authentic power? Oh, I love that. I love what you said. Cause I always tell my kids, your words are you are your world. What you say you will become. And so we're right. very even careful and mindful in my house. So authentic power, authentic power means to me, and this is my definition of it. And I recognize that anyone could have uh, look at mystical words of power. I love that. Um, authentic power to me means that honoring and accessing the wisdom that we already have within us. I mm -hmm. think people forget that we are our, we we are the experts of our own lives. We already have the answers within us, right. but there's so much noise around us. Right. There's the news, there's social media, there's marketing, there's advertising, there's influences everywhere. There's society, there's cultural norms. There's so much of people telling you how to live, how to do, how to be, how to human be. And, and what I learned through my own health crisis was that when I turned on that, off that noise, get quiet and still and listen within I, I already know what I had to do. I knew what I had to do. Uh, when I was in my health crisis, I thought it was going to be all the doctors that were going to fix me. Guess what? That didn't right. happen. It was me. No. And so authentic power means li listening to that inner wisdom and that inner knowing, acknowledging and being aware of that inner knowing within you. But then also, this is the hard part, is it trusting that wisdom. And that's where we lose direction. Like, as, like we don't want to trust what we're hearing. We're like, oh, I've got that gut feeling. I've got this knowing. I don't know. You need to trust it and trust that it is true. And I think that's where I, like the message I want to tell people is when you do start accessing your authentic power, you might hear things that surprise you. Listen to that, tune into that, lean into that, start trusting that. That's where transformation takes place. Beautiful. I mean, you're you are um you're on fire, Ashley. How's that? <laughs> you're saying a lot in a short amount of time, which is, you know, again, the how do I say it? Like uh the summary of a real master. You know, you you're 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 saying some <laughs> profound stuff. No, but I mean you really are living your calling. It's you know, it's very obvious. You know, the, I have people that come on the show, not very many, but in the earlier days, you know, who use buzzwords because you know that's how they're trying to impress. But like, you know, I can separate and spot when a person really is truly speaking from a form of knowing, and clearly you are. So the second uh, po point, you know, was um you've interviewed over 20 experts on healing from trauma. Yeah. And I really wanted to get deep on now. Um, so what did you learn? Now I am a really big advocate of trauma therapists mm. of healing your personal trauma, you know, human beings, in my opinion, uh, you know, for, for the most part, live many different lifetimes. We carry trauma. You know, the Bible talks about the sins of the father and the sins of the mother, but really what it's saying is, is that this is like, you know, uh, interpersonal, transgenerational trauma that lives on the soul's imprint. And so as we come in and go out and come back in, if these things are not healed or integrated, they cause massive issues and disturbances in our life. And as you know, you can also be traumatized right when you come out of the womb. Yep. The doctor dropped me, you know, and I landed on my head before they handed me to my mom and my dad. So, I mean, the trauma that my mom and dad must have experienced, watched the doctor drop me. You know, I mean, people always say like when they hear that story, they're like, oh, now I know why you're the way you are. <laughs> right? But it's true. I mean, trauma is a huge component in our lives. So talk a little bit about that. Oh, gosh, I have so much to say about trauma. I mean, there's personal trauma, there's worldly trauma, there's generational trauma. And I like to think that 
I'm breaking ancestral trauma and generational trauma and personal trauma in my own life today. Awesome. To, so my daughters, I have three dollar daughters, so they don't have to face it in the way that awesome. I have. And um, this is what got me to where I I was because I did not want to face my trauma. Um, and I think that's just in our culture. Nobody wants to address it. Nobody wants to face it. We wear the mask of strength uh, and act like everything is okay. When really like we, our trauma is there for a reason. It's we're, we're meant to address it, you know, in the same way. And I might like the subtitle of my book is give yourself permission to feel in the same way that we have the beautiful gift of feeling joy and happiness and inspiration. These uncomfortable feelings, grief, sadness, anger, they can also be a beacon of lessons and hope. We're meant to physically process them as humans because trauma is stored in the body. And that's what I've learned. And when we process and release those, tra- release it and learn from it, that's where real healing happens. And for me, my, my personal trauma here, and I could talk about generational trauma, but in for specifically related to my book, my personal trauma is that when I was 11 years old, my father dropped dead in front of me wow. um, as from a sudden death heart attack. And I tried to save his life. My sister tried to save his life. She was nine years old. So did my mom. My mom and sister tag team CPR. Well, I ran out to call 911 and get help. And so for an 11 year old, that the, your, my father's death was a lot for me to carry. You know, we learned that his heart was 90% blocked. There was nothing that we could have done to save him. That didn't matter for years that followed. I lived with the guilt that I didn't do enough to save my father's life. And instead of allowing myself to grieve, which is what my body needed to do, I didn't talk about it. I didn't acknowledge it. I went and wore this mask of strength acting like everything was fine. I wouldn't talk about it. And like on, paper, I looked like I had all my shit together. In high school, I was captain of my dance team, secretary of my class. In college, I was president of my sorority, editor of the school newspaper. But inside, what I found was that I was so busy. I was keeping busy with all of these accolades with all of these praises. Everybody thought Ashley was so great, or at least I'd like to think that probably not. (laughs) I was falling apart. I was a people pleaser. I had no boundaries. I had a destructive relationship with work, a destructive relationship with alcohol, destructive relationships with partners. It was just all bad. And it's because I was numbing myself out, didn't want to listen to my authentic power. And it wasn't until a a health crisis hit me over my head when I was in my um, early 30s. And it was Lyme disease and postpartum depression at the same time. I was put in a part-time hospitalization program at a mental health facility to address the postpartum depression and the Lyme disease. I almost died. Um, I had to get a pick line to my heart. I, I completely lost ability to walk, talk, speak, you name it. I was bedridden. But that was my moment of stillness. That was my spiritual calling and my spiritual awakening. That was the universe telling me, Ashley, we've been trying to signal for you right. for a very, very long time. And it's, it's, you're the type of person, Ashley, that's going to take something like this to happen to awaken yourself. And that is exactly what happened. Once I surrendered to the universe and I surrendered to my inner knowing and my authentic power. That is when the physical healing happened. And I always say the physical healing was only 10, 20% of what needed to happen. The rest of this was a 1000% spiritual journey for me that started with me. And once I began to uncover it, I look back now, and this happened all in like 2016, 2017. I am a completely different person than I was back then than who I am now. I am spiritually aligned. I am open. I am vulnerable. I access my authentic power daily. I listen within. I listen to my intuition. I listen to my higher consciousness. And because of it, I am a um, I am more whole and I and I am of service to the world. And that's exactly what I want to be. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor.
Well, let me let me unpack some of that. So yeah. what I have learned is people who are walking the spiritual path, who are of service, you know, of their highest and best good, again, in the in the service to really creation, which is all of life, which is clearly what you're doing. You had to, just as I have, and people like us have to go through great spiritual trials and tests, the Lyme disease, near death. You know, you also witnessed your father dying. I mean, people unfortunately label these occurrences. By the way, there's a part of this in my email that's going out today, but people label negative occurrences in their life and then define themselves or define the occurrences around their life as negative. Versus yeah. looking at them and seeing that these were transformative experiences that allowed you to evolve and grow your soul, which is, yeah. you know, allowing you to be the person that you are today, which is what you just said. So it's like we as a species have to get to a place where everything is about allowing, right? Allowing everything to happen to us, whether it's a life or death thing, our kid gets killed in a car crash you know, something horrible happens to our mom and dad, whatever it is, there is a lesson to learn from the experience, but you have to, as I say, become the neutral observer in your own life. And you have to look from a multidimensional perspective and stop, you know, labeling everything as good or bad or a collapse or a debacle or a fiasco, which, you know, I'm sure you, along with myself and people like us did until we get to that place of, like you said, where the healing happens, we get the universal awareness that comes into our soul and we're like, okay, cool. You know, I can look back on this now and say that because I had Lyme disease, because my father died, I became the person that I am now. Absolutely. I, I love what you're saying. And it really resonates with me because I call Lyme disease. Gosh, first of all, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but if it causes a spiritual awakening, maybe I would because it was a gift. Lyme disease was a totally. gift to me by the universe. Oh my gosh, was it a gift? And my father dying was just recognition for me, like the grief that I experienced of how much I was loved and loved him and, and how blessed I was to have a father who was present, who loved me. And like that, what a gift that was. Not everybody gets that. Right. right, right. And I, and I have found ways now to have a relationship with him, even in death. And in many ways, like I get chills talking about this. He's still alive. Oh, yeah. Like he's still oh, yeah. here. He's of still here. He might not physically. And sure, there are days when I get pangs of grief and I still physically miss him. And I allow myself to feel that now where I used to not. But I also have this incredible relationship with him in death that I that that goes far beyond the physical realm and way into the spiritual realm. I can have conversations with him right. when I go running, my, that's my spiritual encounter with him and and you know visiting his gravesite, looking at physical pictures of him. I have just found so many beautiful ways every day to incorporate him into my life, knowing that I am a piece of him too. He lives on ah. in me. And so, you know, it, it just it's changed. Having the spiritual awakening has changed the way that I look at death. It's not final. It might be physically final, but spiritually it, it's, it's just the beginning. Beautiful. I mean, uh, so, so the way I look at death and I know you're at the same place now, because again, the way you speak, I can hear it. I feel your energy. Um, death is nothing more than a change of focus from a physical body to a non-local etheric form, right? An energy form. Because as you and I both know, um, all we are is spiritual energy beings having a physical experience. Right? Like you, your body, my body, that's not who we are. You know, I'm not Jay Campbell or Ashley. You know, we're, we're literally energy beings divinely, you know, issued or emanated from God, source consciousness, however you want to define it. And in these physical bodies, we are experiencing the experiences so that all of us, which are obviously collectively connected, you know, through the holographic soul fractals of, again, God or the oversoul or whatever you want to call it, so that everybody is learning and growing at all times, literally. Yeah. Yes. You know, people, you know, the religious people get all freaked out and say, you can't say that God is omniscient and knows all and sits on a chalice in the sky with a golden trident. No, dude, like creation is dynamic and it's growing and evolving 
as it is issuing more and more souls and more and more energy. And so it doesn't even matter. And when you get to that level of awareness, you also know that everything that happens is benefiting. You know, there's a statement from this guy, right? Dr. Hawkins. And he says, everything is happening as it is divinely intended, yes. always and in all ways. Mm. And if we resist that, then that is blocking our connection to universal life force energy, which is God, source creation, you know, again, the soul, the higher self, super conscious wisdom, whatever you want to call it, the thing that we access when we go into stillness. So it's like, you know, not everybody, I know we're having a very advanced conversation here, right? It's two people that are very advanced spiritually, but the good news, Ashley, is there's a lot of people who clearly who watch my show who are waking up and are at our level and higher. And that's the best part about this is having these kind of conscious communication events, because, you know, as I like to say, when we talk about these kind of things, some people will hear this and go, oh, opt out. Yeah. You know, they just blasphemed Christianity or Judaism or Islam or whatever, all the Abrahamic nonsense. Right. Or they're like, hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to turn this up and I'm going to go somewhere where I can actually focus on what these two are saying, because I actually am starting to think this way. And that's where I feel right now the universe is going right more and more people are waking up mm -hmm. more and more people are starting to understand that we are energy beings we're not these just physical bodies and so these conversations that you and i are having and there are obviously many people like this having these conversations right now are benefiting as you said many times which i give you credit the collective consciousness because the collective consciousness of all of humanity is a field and for a long time, it's been below this line of integrity as Hawkins quantifies. And now it's starting to move up over into, you know, neutrality, willingness. And all it has to get to is acceptance and the matrix ends. Right. There's no more Ukraine and Russia and China and the United States and all of this nonsense, divide and conquer duality. It's all humanity. We're all connected. So how can we all work together as one? It's so true. And at, hearing you talk, I, th I just think it's so beautiful. And something that I've learned is that I can't convince someone to go right. on their own spiritual journey. Totally. Um, you know, my mom and my sister being examples, I, it's like, I'm waiting for them, but while I wait, I'm going to talk about it right. in hopes that I can influence them. And like, that's why I'm in the business of PR. I'm essentially like doing PR for the higher consciousness um, because I've learned that if you, and it's like, it's like a mom telling, you know, their kid to like, oh, you should do this or you shouldn't be friends with this person or go pick up. Like the kids don't want to listen. They're like, oh mom, I already know what I need to do. <laughs> and so it's very similar when you're like wishing and hoping that your other friends and loved ones could be where you're at and recognizing that everyone is on their own path and own journey and it's going to happen in their own time, but you can gently guide them on that path just by having conversations like this, just by writing about it and putting it out into the world, just by popping on an Instagram live. And if, even if it's just you and talking about it, that is energy that you're putting in the right. world. And you might make people think a little bit more about where they at are, where they're at spiritually and having that starting place. And like, I had that starting place. I started in like deep surrender and pain and, and, and it was this massive awakening, but I didn't become like this overnight. This has been years and years and years of deep spiritual work and experimentation and prayer and meditation and right. sacred writing. And I could go on and on and on yeah. and break all the things. Mm -hmm. But you got like starting somewhere, starting in that one little place. And for me, that was just, all right, God, divine, higher power. I surrender. I am no longer in control here. I recognize that what's happening here is not in my control. It's like once we realize that we're not the ones in control, but we can control right. our words and our energy, that's when everything changes. That's exactly right. I mean, again, well said, I really don't have much to offer on other than just kind of, you know, to go deeper on what you were saying about like our family and our loved ones and our stuff. Like one of my spiritual mentors, you know, taught me that to attempt to awaken others is an act of spiritual violence, right? Because everybody That's is that. exactly where they need to be. Right. And so going in there and proselytizing mom, dad, brother, sister, whatever, can't you see this? 
I mean, this is so clear today, right? Like they can't because yeah. again, everything in the universe is vibrating. Yes. And it's all vibrating at a different rate and speed. And the higher conscious you are, the more you're in oscillation, the lower conscious you are, the more you're slow and you're not ready and you're in service to self. That's cool. There's nothing wrong with being in service to self. It's just the path is being in service to others, to, in service to creation. Right. And we're all walking the same path. Some of us are walking it faster than others, right? In that, you know, you're higher vibration now and you're about service to the greater good. But if you're not there yet, that's okay too. You will eventually get there. I mean, all of us are walking the spiritual path. Again, our purpose as these energetic spiritual beings is to evolve and grow our soul. There isn't anything else. It's not about making money and having nice cars and, you know, having these material things. And look, I know a lot of people that's their focus. They're in service to self. They have not yet evolved their soul mm -hmm. to that level of what I call again, cosmic awareness or universal consciousness that it's all about, as you and I were saying off the air, raising the collective human consciousness field. Because if we don't, we can't evolve the planet. And I know you know this, the planet is a living, breathing organism herself. Yeah. She is Gaia, whatever you want to call it, mother earth, she is a living organism and we are a part and part of her. And I will tell you, and I've said this many times before, that she gets to a point where we're like dehumanizing this planet, dehumanizing her through the pollution and all this stuff. She's just going to get up and shake and all of us are going to be like ants and it's going to be like flood time, you know, tsunami time, earthquakes volcanoes, all that stuff. And, it, and you know, look, I'm not saying this doom and gloom. I'm saying this because you and I both know it's happened many times previously. Yeah. It's and here we, well, here we are now with the ability, you and I are having these amazingly high conscious conversations. There are many others that are doing this. It's up to us, meaning the people like us, which I want to say, Ashley, you know, be, to be fair, is probably only between 12 and 15% of humanity right now. But again, it's rising by the day. I feel that. We, we have to get it to 20. Mm -hmm. So right now we're five to 7% away from ending the matrix. So again, these conversations that you and I are having are critically important, not to be saying that from an ego standpoint, but to saying that because this fires people's awakening and awareness on. Again, we're not proselytizing. We're sharing this energy. If people find value in it or they find an ear that it says, wow, that's interesting. I'll listen. Then that's great. But again, we're not saying, listen to us. Right. That's you know everything. You know what I mean? So it's like you just have to get to a place, meaning the people that are watching this and everyone on this planet, where what we talk about becomes the most important thing. Because again, you said it to me at the very beginning of the show. What matters now is raising human consciousness. There's nothing else. Yeah. And I like, I also want to go back to, you know, your map of consciousness you sure. pointed it out too, that, you know, before I had my own spiritual awakening, I was just like one of those people, like what's in it for me? What's in it for me? The money. Of course. Da, da, da. Of course. And now the change, the main change is how can I be of service? Mm -hmm. Like I write that in my journal almost daily. What can I do to be of service today? How can I be of service to your audience Jay? What can I do to be of service? And like that for me has been the biggest change um, on a consciousness and spiritual level. And that like, I no longer think or care about what I'm going to get out of as any situation. It's more of how can I serve the better good uh, and, and help change the world and elevate consciousness. Like that's, if I've done that in a day, then I've, I feel like I've done my job. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. I mean, Ashley, you are, I mean, I can tell you from just speaking to you again, not knowing you, but so I should say, I feel that people like us do know each other, right? Yeah, like yeah, we like have, yeah, we've, <laughs> we've served, well, we've served 
most likely in past lives together. We would not be, you know, brought together again unless there wasn't a higher calling, a higher power, a higher involvement for it. So it's like, like I told you off air again, I'll say it. I call us the children of the light. We are the ones that are pushing this message of, again, universal consciousness, of raising the boat, of getting everybody on the same path. Because again, that's really the only path. Once you get to a certain level of spiritual awareness, you do realize that your soul is here to evolve and grow in the greater good, as you said, in service to all of humanity, all of creation, all of sentient life, really. You know, the, the ancient Incans who knew all of this, by the way, you know, many of the indigenous yeah. Mesoamerican cultures and, and of course, uh, indigenous in the United States, they all know this. It's like they came from this like super advanced highly spiritual, non-material culture, you know, maybe they were the Elohim or whoever these progenitor, you know, groups were that built these amazing stone monuments and all this stuff, but they called it Ani. And Ani is, and by the way, Ani in Mesoamerica is also Ani in Japan. You think that's a coincidence? It's, it's the divine reverence for all of life. All of life is sacred, conscious, and sentient, not just people and animals, the, re- the trees, the rocks, the, yeah. the rivers, that, you know, everything is conscious and sentient. So it's like, you get to that level. Are you going to litter outside? No. Are you going to step on bugs and kill them? No. You you have to raise your consciousness to like this. Again, it's a divine reverence for all of life. It's all sacred. Yeah. And they knew all of that stuff hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. And again, it just, to me, it proves that we constantly have these Golden age to dark age, golden age to dark age, golden age to dark age. And it's up to us to end the dark ages by creating, again, this consciousness field that people don't have differences, enmity, anger, you know, victimhood, you know, the fear. It's So, again, it's, it really is up to us. I know that's a big burden for people like us, but, I mean, hey, man, we got to get going. Every day is an opportunity. <laughs> well, I mean, that's why you're already doing this by by hosting your podcast. And, you know, you, you also make me think somebody was asking me yesterday, like, okay, you know, I'm, you know, almost 40. And and the, the girl who I was talking to was like, you know, um, what would your 20-year-old self, like, relate to this? And I always think about, like, what we can be doing to elevate the consciousness of, of, you know, the younger generation. So they don't have to wait for a crisis like mine to happen. But again, like this goes back to being on our own journey in our own time. I wonder for you, if you have any ideas on what we can do to like help elevate the consciousness of the higher gen of the younger generation. Um, it's a great question, Ashley. I talk about this all the time. You know, like you, I have three daughters, uh, two biologicals, one who is, um, no, no, I helped raise her, but she's not my bio. She's a sophomore in college, amazing girl. But my two bios are uh, 14 and 12, about to be a freshman, about to be in seventh grade. And they are enslaved by technology and devices. And no matter what we do as parents, it's part of their generation. Yeah, it's it is. Part, it's part of where we are now. So all you and I can do is limit their screen time, limit their exposure. I mean, again, we can't shelter or shield them from it because then they're not actually getting the benefit of the technology, but it's a lot, it's much harder. I mean, I think, you know, this, um, you know, they have been inculcated with these things since basically they got out of the womb. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and we both know that the technology while has many benefits and many advantages. It also can be, if you're consuming it all the time, it's always in your hand. It can also enslave you, right? We also know that the technology from a standpoint of the EMFs that are coming out of this is not good for biological systems. So it's it, it to, to answer your question, all you and I can do is lead by example. Yep. We, you know, we lead from the front. We talk about consciousness. We talk about vibration. We talk about what I, what you say, I say all the time too, is the service to humanity, service to creation at our highest and best good. And it doesn't matter what you do, whether you're an, a journalist, a podcaster, an author, a ditch digger, a janitor. I always say this about like when I use the janitor thing versus the CEO, the janitor works and helps more people than the CEO. The janitor, if he's in a college or an auditorium, you know, he's cleaning a ground, a sacred ground, you know, creating a sacred space for thousands of people a week, you know, so that they can walk around and not feel like they have shit on their shoes or their clothes or whatever. So as long as you're doing it 
and you feel good and you're putting that energy into the universe that, hey, I'm serving at my highest and best good. Who gives a shit about the money that you make or your title or the prestige? It's Doesn't literally matter. about, yeah, it's literally about, am I helping to serve and create a better environment for the people that I'm serving? That's, that's all it is. That's exactly it. And you know, my, my husband, who's very spiritually aligned too, is like, we all poop out of butts. Like we're all the same. Like it doesn't matter exactly. if you're a CEO or a janitor, we're all ended right. up in the same place. Right. And so, and, it, and that really does make you think and make people, hopefully make people think about like, it's true. These titles, these names, like you had mentioned, like I'm Ashley, you're Jay. That does not going to matter at the end of the day. It, it's not going to matter. That's our physical identity. And, exactly. and what is of so much more value and, of, and importance is our, our energetic identity. And that's what yes. you're doing the good work to help raise that vibration. And I hope that by sharing my story um, of, you know, experiencing going from low vibration to where I'm at now will help inspire others to get curious about it too. It's beautiful. And, and, and by the way, we're all on the same path. You know, the great Walter Russell says, we come out of the womb at the base of the jungle, and then the journey begins to the top of the mountaintop. And that is the spiritual path. It really is in the jungle. We're in low vibration survival. How am I going to make it? You know, is mommy going to give me a tit? Am I going to eat food in four years? Am I going to be able to physically, you know, take care of myself? I mean, again, that's the ego. Yes, the, the, ego. the ego is programmed to ensure that you and I survive. Right. But then we get to a level of hopefully we're in our teens and in our early twenties. And now we're starting to evolve through the contrast. We realize that what we're being told is mostly bullshit. You know, we see the fear programming because that's one of the things I would say that a lot of the younger people today have that you and I didn't have is that they can at least find people who are spiritually advanced and aware and reach out to them and ask questions. When you and I were growing up, there was nobody. I mean, we had books Right. But I mean, like, unless you had a mentor and somebody who was truly advanced, there was no way to know. So at least yeah. the young people have us. They do have opportunities to find mentors who truly are walking a higher path. And then, yeah. as you know, I'll just finish with this. It's really getting to a place where you do not fear death because death is just of the physical body. It's not the death of the expression of you as a soul, as a spiritual being who is infinite. We are energy. We're infinite and ever expanding. So once you conquer that, once you conquer that awareness, then you are really, truly now living your purpose, your mission, your joy, and you're here to enjoy the ride. Remember the Nissan commercial, enjoy the ride? Hey. Yep. That's what it is. And death doesn't need to be scary. I actually no. talk about that in my book about how we should be making space for brave conversations about death and what, what it looks like and how, you know, of course you'll feel sad, but, but it really doesn't have to be like, if you think about it and from a spiritual sense, and like, this goes back to like having a relationship with my dad now, even in death, it, it, there are ways to beautifully find that if you just right own in on your authentic power and listen to how you can. And I'm not saying you need to be like a medium and, and talk, sure. to spirits, but sure. acknowledging that there is a, there is a world beyond what yes. my physical then, then sight. Yes. Our senses. There are so many more sentences that we can't even right. to imagine. We are just, you know, with physical world where we're, we stop at the six senses, but right. there's so much more beyond that. Yeah. It's sad, right? Because you and I both come from, I'm sure, you know, similar uh, Abrahamic religious upbringings, whatever they are, we don't have to get into it, but it's like, I still laugh. And I think about how brainwashed they make people about going to the grave site. Right. And sitting there and worshiping a dead body <laughs> when well, they can sit right in their room and they can connect with their dad or their grandma or their aunt or their brother or their sister or their baby. You know, again, like you said, through that extra sensory extra dimensional perception. You don't have to go to their grave site. They're not literally in that carcass. It, <laughs> it's, it makes me think of that poem by, I think it's Mary Elizabeth Fry. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am the gentle wind that blows and it goes that's on. Awesome. Yeah. And it's, that's exactly what it is. And that's like a poem that I've always thought about for my dad. I'm like, you know, I never wanted to go to his grave site. Right. And, and maybe there's a reason for that. Yeah, because you knew. Maybe subconsciously I knew. You did know. 
there. He's the gentle wind that blows. Right, right? Exactly. He's, he's a part of, he's a part of me. And, um, I've also, I mean, I can also like get into this, but like you, I get signs all the time. Oh, absolutely. That my loved ones are still with us. Like even when we were, um, we're having this conversation right now and like, this happens all the time. I look at the clock and it's four, 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 or three, 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 right. And those are signs that, that to me, that one, I'm on the right path Two, yep. I am not alone. My loved ones are with me. Right. My spirit guides are with me and, exactly. and I get those exactly. signs all the time. So I think the other thing I'll say is just pay attention to those little signs that you might birds that I see the same recurring bird, the same recurring numbers. Those are signs, the same songs. Like those are signs that we're getting from, um, from the spirit realm. That's what I believe. at least. No, I mean, look, we're on the same wavelength. All my social media is J Campbell three, three, three master teachers, right? Like right here, angel number three, three, three. Right. So, I mean, Yes, all that. I mean, again, we're 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 singing from the same hymnal, from the same pulpit. So, I mean, it's an honor to have you here. Let me uh, put your social media stuff up here. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, if somebody you know wants to work with you, podcast with you, connect with you, I mean, obviously, we have their your URLs and stuff and social media and stuff. But, but how well, how would you want them to reach out to you and connect with you in the best way? Yeah. Well, the best way would be to go to ashleybernardi.com and that's where you can learn all about my story, my book, my journey, authentic power, give yourself permission to feel. And then if you're a change maker who wants to elevate your voice to the masses and help me raise the collective consciousness, go visit Nardi Media and I can help you do it there. Beautiful. Well, again, Ashley, you are amazing. I'm very grateful that you came on the show today. It's all, I always feel myself uplifted when I talk to people about consciousness, it's just, it's it, like you said, it's all that matters. I mean, there's really nothing is important anymore. So get, so guys and gals support the amazing folks that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Please check her out at her website, uh, her Nardi, Nardi media. If you're a change maker, a social media, facebook.com, Ashley.Bernardi.5. And then her Instagram is Booker Bernardi, which I, I presume is your uh, media company. So that's awesome. So guys, remember, Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.